Chris Gass worked his way up from a childhood without indoor plumbing to then owning more than 20 McDonald's. He's now a congressman and he's pushing to overhaul the federal welfare system to make their next their next guest worked his way up from a childhood without indoor plumbing to then owning more than 20 McDonald's. He's now a congressman and he's pushing to over their next their next guest their next guest worked his way up from a childhood without indoor plumbing to then owning more than 20 McDonald's. He's now a congressman and he's pushing to overhaul the federal welfare system to make sure benefits get to those who need them while also cutting the national debt. I'm really pleased to say that joining us now, the House Ways and Means Committee member, Oklahoma Republican Congressman Kevin Hearn. Congressman, thank you for joining us. You're sort of the classic story of working your way and defying the odds. Talk to us about some of the reforms and the overhauls that you're proposing uh, within the welfare system. Well, thanks for having me. You know, I, I look at this country as, as we talk about this great experiment uh, called the United States of America for the rest of the world to watch. And gravely concerned that uh, a person that growing up today like I did in extraordinary poverty wouldn't have the same opportunities. And so I want to make sure that we have the same opportunities for these children today to be successful and get on their, their journey to the American dream. One of the biggest issues out there is the benefits cliff. I mean, there are so many programs, uh, recent count, 92 federally backed programs, most recent numbers of 2019, over a trillion dollars spent by the federal government helping individuals across our great nation. Uh, to get out of poverty. The problem is they're not incentivized to stay out of poverty. And the benefits cliff is the primary reason for that, that if they make a single dollar more uh, by working harder, getting, you know, earning that, they lose their benefits. And we need to make sure we, we calibrate those where a person can work their way off so that they have the, the opportunity because they may be multi-generational welfare recipients. And you know, I, I, I'm a huge Ronald Reagan fan, and the, one of the greatest quotes in my life that I've ever heard him say was, the greatest social program is a job. Mm. And certainly that was uh, certainly true in my life. Congressman, you're talking about working your way into opportunity, working your way into a better life. But we're hearing stories almost on a daily basis about handing money out to people, whether it's reparations or whether it's universal basic income. What would happen in this country if more locales like the one we're seeing in uh, Tennessee moved to policies like that? Could you have gotten to where you are with policies like that in your life? Uh, absolutely not. And it's very concerning. And as uh, my fellow congressman just mentioned a minute ago, these monies are so many trillions of dollars have been spent in the last two to three years in, in the name of COVID that are now being abused. Uh, I think right now the number is around $100 billion of unspent COVID money that we're looking to claw back to use for you know getting our debt under control you mentioned about working on our debt limit um, i'm one that believes that in, in these moments based on our history when we have a debt limit uh, increase opportunity we sit down and look at our spending mm -hmm. and we have just gotten to a point where we're trying to get everybody to to be dependent on the federal government and that's that's going to be very problematic i've i've been pushing since i've been in congress about getting americans back into the workforce and uh, I've been called anything from insensitive to a racist by my fellow mm. members. I never knew it was racist for someone to want to go back to work or get into a job. But, you know, that, that's, uh, that's sort of what we're seeing today is that there's a complete move by the Democrat Party to have the American people dependent upon governments, not just the federal government, but local governments as well. And Congressman, you bring up a great point because that's a huge cultural issue and it's going to become a cultural norm. We see it happening over the course of the last couple of years if we move forward. So how do you reform the welfare system and also try to shift the culture back? Well, one of the first things I did as a member of Congress when I got into office in January 2019 was to attached to the Farm Bill a letter to then Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue to state that 18 to 49-year-old adults without dependents, able-bodied, uh, with no physical or mental disabilities, no children, you think about all of these, there's like, there's like three or four million people that are receiving welfare benefits and they should be working. And there's been a strong pushback by the Democrat Party to have no work requirements on anything. Mm. And you have to be able to get a job, to get a better job, to get a career. I, I call it the ABCs of the journey of life. And so many people today don't want, uh, don't want to start out with a job, or don't want to try to get a better job, mm -hmm. they want the career first. And as you all talked about, businesses are looking for people. Uh, we have a 10, 10 million people looking mm -hmm. uh, need jobs right now, and we've got 5 million looking. So we have plenty of jobs, Americans need to go to work. 
Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Congressman.